Welcome back to the Cube, our end-to-end -end coverage of Red Hat Summit and Ansible Fest here in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm Paul Gillen here with Rob Stretche, and we're about to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is emerging technologies. And with us is Aaron Boyd, who is Red Hat's Director of Emerging Technologies, distinguished engineer, software engineer, full-time geek. <laughs> and uh, pleasure to have you with us on theCUBE. Thanks for having me. Let's start by talking about what a distinguished engineer does. Sure, so a distinguished engineer, um, we have you know several, obviously, at uh, Red Hat, and within the office of the CTO, we even have a distinguished engineer vitality program. So basically, a distinguished engineer is both um, able to see you know, the 10,000 foot view, but also go very deep on subjects, so we help contribute to you know, portfolio architecture, different designs, talking with customers, and most especially, innovation, which is what we do in emerging tech. Now, emerging technologies covers a very broad swath of, of topics. Uh, how much expertise, uh, how, do you, how do you acquire the expertise you need to dive deep into these, uh, so many different areas? Yeah, so surprisingly enough, we have very small teams dedicated to about eight different subjects. Anywhere from computational infrastructure, to security, to, uh, you know, edge, sustainability, AI, and the idea is that we can work with upstream communities or customers or even I, even Red Hat Research to look at new ways to solve customer problems um, using open source technologies. So, um, you know, mo some companies have emerging technologies, it's more like a research skunk works that none of those things see product. And really the point of what we do is that we're innovating within that space and lowering the risk for our customers by co-creating with them and then bringing those features into product in a rapid way. So, so that's really getting into working with those uh, open source communities, the kind of helping them mature what they're Absolutely. doing? Yeah. Absolutely, so, you know, one of the technologies we recently graduated into product is SigStore, you probably heard of it. You know, and it's the gold standard now for container signing. That came directly out of emerging technologies from, you know, we're seeing what our customers are struggling with, we understand the security space, and so then we helped grow and mature that project into a very large community to help solve one of those problems. Yeah. And, and I think they were talking about with Ansible and Backstage and the Developer Hub uh, earlier, is that another one that was coming through that emerging technologies as well? Yeah, Backstage was incubated in our office. You yeah. know, it was an experiment looking at kind of how do we do open services. You know, services mainly within, um, you know, the large cloud providers is pretty private. Their secret yeah. sauce is how they do support. And you know, Red Hat would really love to crack that open and figure out how we can as a community solve those problems more collaboratively. And so Backstage was one of the tools that we were using to experiment of how could this work? How could it integrate into OpenShift? And how can we expand it out into what our customers need and so yeah a couple people from our team contributed to those plugins that are now being GA next month. Now unlike most technology companies everything that you do ultimately is released open source correct? Yes absolutely. So how does that what what variables does that introduce or complexities I guess to working with those different open source projects and, the, and those independent developers uh, within the context of, of, a, Red, of a Red Hat uh, organization? Yeah so I always like to think about my team leads and the people that work in emerging tech is like enterprise entrepreneurs. So they're going out, they're learning about the technology, thinking of new ideas and possibly creating new communities, but the point is that it has to be grounded in reality. So we work with um, our also customer open innovation team to understand the market, understand the opportunities, and really understand customer use cases. So the balance is, is this interesting? Are we solving real problems? And is this something customers are going to want? And we really come forward with a business case of how we then integrate it into products where it makes sense. How do you bubble up from customers those projects that, that merit your attention, that, that, get, that get the resources to, to be developed into projects? Um, so we prioritize like every other engineering group based on you know the, the critical need and so it, it really is important to us that we get feedback from our customers so we understand is this an edge case that you know a singular customer has or is there a much broader market or you know problem to solve that we can help a lot of customers so as I said we run pretty lean we're less than 50 people but uh, have a pretty fast velocity of what we can turn out um, to put you know, as a POC with the customer to validate and then uh, tech transfer into production, which goes into product. And is, is what's the life cycle of that? Is from idea to, is it 
uh, committee or it comes in through a customer or are you more forward looking? How, how does that, the next thing you're looking at come to bear and come to your office? Yeah, great question. Um, really anywhere. <laughs> so we, we are looking 12 to 18 months out, so we're more looking at long-term strategy, so technologies mm -hmm. that are going to solve what is on the roadmap beyond possibly what's in the current product portfolio. Um, and so, you know, ideas might stem from a conversation at KubeCon, or they might stem from a community meetup, or they might stem from a couple customer conversations, but we do a lot of experimentation to vet whether or not, you know, it's a viable technology that we should be using. Let's take a current example. There's craziness over uh, generative AI and, and ChatGPT and, yep. and the like right now, and that has raised awareness of AI in general uh, and the buzz level about AI. How do you penetrate that and decide what really makes sense to 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 turn into a, an actual product? Right. And and I think people should be asking those questions. So from our perspective. We started looking at the generative AI late last year, especially with our partnership with IBM and IBM Watson and the capabilities there with Ansible Lightspeed. Just to understand, first of all, is this something that is on a hype cycle, as you see within emerging tech, or is this something that can really be viable to our customers, and in what sense? And so we've taken a little bit more conservative approach to looking at how can this augment and make more efficient what developers or op, you know, operations IT already do in a way that it can be verified. Um, and so I think you know, Ansible's taken a, a great approach into doing that to make sure that as you use that model, it's retraining itself, it's taking feedback from the user, whether or not it was useful and putting it back through. And I think you know, this integration of AI into IT should be done hand in hand with the people who work in those jobs. Um, to really make it smarter, make it more very specific to each one of the things that it's trying to accomplish. Yeah, I, I think that was that was a really uh, a high point that what Chris was talking about, how it was very focused on, from an AI, from a model perspective, being focused versus being very large and general. Yeah. And is that something that you work, like you, I think you mentioned IBM Research, and was that something that incubated within your group and moved into Ansible, or was that, how did that? Um, we worked with IBM Research, yeah. you know, in the AI space, uh, re most recently with Codeflare and Ray integration into OpenShift, but the other piece that we're actually looking at right now in emerging tech is, is more the small models. Okay. Like, how do we actually run these models where the data is being captured? How do we run them on the edge? Yeah. You know, the holy grail, how do we run them on a CPU? So, you know, while, while there is a, a use case for these, you know, LLMs, there's also a use case we really believe on inference and AI at the edge. And, you know, the, the life cycle of that, to your point, is um, how are we protecting the data? What is the provenance? How are we running that there and not having to move data around and have, you know, costs considered in, in terms of network? So, really what we're looking towards the future is we think models will actually shrink, you know, from here on out so that they can be run on more commodity level hardware on the edge um, and you know, help things with 5G has provided us. Yeah, yeah I think that, that actually hit on a very interesting, because you mentioned that one of the pillars was sustainability. And one of the things that we've seen in talking and we were, we were at a open source uh, summit in Vancouver a couple weeks back and one of the topics that we kind of broached on was there was a, a lot of uh, discussions around energy mm -hmm. and some open source and LF energy and I know Red Hat's contributing back into that. From a sustainability perspective, it, the models being big definitely causes problems and we're hearing that, you know, uh, it's, it's, you know, $700,000 a day to run chat G GPT exactly. and things like that. So is that something you're focusing on? Like when you're saying you're looking at low, uh, how to bring down the size of the models and inference, going towards inference and things of that, is that? Absolutely, yeah. so one of the projects that we started in uh, Merging Tech is called Kepler. Yep. Um, we recently just contributed it to the CNCF Sandbox right. and Waman Chen in my office is, is one of the, the people behind this and the idea was we need to be measuring how much energy we're using. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, the original metrics around chat GPT took a long time to come out of how expensive it actually was. Right. And behind that expense is a lot of energy that's being used. And so we really are taking into consideration how do we standardize reporting of these metrics, you know, down to the kernel level. 
And then how are we measuring that and improving it and scheduling it on a way that makes better use of the hardware? So what we hope is that, you know, maybe you have a small model that doesn't need a GPU, right. you know? And, and so this kind of goes into our computational infrastructure where, you know, the data center's reimagined. You then have pools of resources instead of having to, you know, tie yourself to a specific server to run on this specific GPU. Instead, you know, let's look at the workload, let's look at the possibilities of what the infrastructure provides, and Kepler has some insight to that. It uses modeling, you know, machine uh, learning right now to be able to do the scheduling, and it will just expand beyond that. I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier is customer co-creation, uh, which is a fairly powerful concept, how, how does that work? So the idea would be, um, you know, we have field chiefs, field architects um, that go into customers talking about what their issues are. You know, we started a very remedial level use case what are your pain points? You know, and, and understanding the pain points of today also gives us some insight into what could be the possible pain points in the future. It's, it's kind of seeing around corners, as we say. So, you know, we, we know, for instance, that because of the chip shortage, we were going to have to be smarter about the way that we use energy. We'd have to be smarter about the way that we build data centers. We'd have to consider there's going to be uh, different architectures that we may need to run on because of all those things. So it's it's seeing the problem, but then also seeing beyond. Because you're having this problem, we go with this technology. What are the other things that we see might happen? A great space is Edge. You know where we've done uh, MicroShift or Red Hat Device Edge, as it's now branded. Um, you know, looking ahead, we're now, what if we have millions of devices then to manage? How do we do that? So co-creation with the customer is understanding how will they use this, how does it affect their business, and what can, you know, lower their costs and make them run better. And so that co-creation around innovation comes from really un deeply understanding what the customer is trying to achieve. Do you have customers actually giving you feedback on prototypes that you create for them? Absolutely, yes. Yep, we work in lockstep working together, uh, figuring things out, coming back to the drawing board if we need to, and, and that's really a great story behind MicroShift is we worked very closely with Lockheed on that prototype, on the POC, you know, up until productizes Red Hat Device Edge, giving us feedback every step of the way. So, uh, give us a little scoop here, we got only a couple minutes left. Uh, what's in your labs right now that you think might we might see as, as Red Hat products in the next year or two? Um, so I think as Red Hat Kepler, which is still you know new, it isn't officially a product. You know I do think that that will become a product within the next year. Um, I do think we will have more solutions around um, AI at the edge. We don't have a name for it yet, but I, I can see us releasing something over the next year. And then um, a year is a long time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of things I'd like to see. I think we're going to have more collaboration with our customers in terms of infrastructure. And you know how, how can we utilize the infrastructure more, uh, just more efficiently, more sustainably? Can we leverage things like RISC-V? Can we do more things at the edge? I think we'll see a lot more growth in the computational infrastructure space, things like CXL. Well, Aaron Boyd, I uh, can't wait to see what comes out of your office. Hopefully <laughs> it will be here next year and, we'll, and some of these, uh, these dreams will have come true. Uh, yes. Thanks for sharing with us what what you do and, and all the innovations under the covers at Red Hat. Of course, thanks for having me. Paul Gillum with Rob Sriche here at uh, Red Hat Summit 2023. We'll be back right after a short break.